This is the first time this is ever happening. It's really exciting. It was something special. These kids are amazing. They're really smart. They, they're really confident. They, they believe in themselves. My name is Matthew Tekatala. I'm a sophomore or 10th grader in uh, high school. Kids had this great attitude about them. They were really friendly with me, you know. I, I thought that there would be some kind of barrier between me and them. Like I was from another country, I was a little older, but as it turns out, no, they, they were really comfortable with me. I was shocked when I heard that. I, I had no idea. All of the children, the 100 of them at this school, they were HIV positive. One of the stories that actually prompted me to do this work was a girl who I knew uh, was in another orphanage. And when she was around 13, her uncle came. He said, now, sister, I will take care of her now and her family is okay to take care. I was actually suspicious. What is he going to do with this child once she is 13? And we started looking at uh, some kind of tracking and finally we found out that she was told, sold for 10,000 rupees. And that is what actually immediately prompted me, my God, something has to be done. We cannot let this happen, both for the sake of the girl or children, also for the sake of the society. People went to Mumbai working and when they were found with HIV, they came back. The families didn't want them, so they had really no place to go. We called it home for the destitute and dying originally. Snagadan, the name itself was a gift of love. All we could do was give them some human dignity back and love and care for them. We started getting women else as well the next year, 98 onwards. When they came and died because there was no treatment, the children were left behind. So in 2001, we opened a home for children, a home where they could have love and care again. Um, we knew they would die by the age of 11, 12. Uh, so until then, we loved them. In 2004, drugs came. HIV treatment uh, started. You are now talking about no more a terminal illness, you are talking about a chronic illness. Uh, with the drugs, now they can live very long and almost normal life. Always wondering what's the point in just giving drugs to the children when you are not looking at their future. You really have to build also and have some kind of dream and vision. So that's when uh, we started focusing on the holistic kind of development of the children, primarily uh, we wanted the children to be children, grow to become normal adults. We have a choice whether or not to ignore the problem or try to solve it. And people are choosing not to. Nea Graham is a village in uh, Tamil Nadu. It's going to be a school, a higher level education school, uh, and a village, all in one. The whole program is dedicated to their rehabilitation from the disease and to make sure that they have a future. The Government of India still do not take these uh, children with HIV as a major uh, group. 
honestly, there is no program for the future of this. They're all giving drugs. That's what they focus, focus on. Not more than that. I really took some time into considering it, reflecting on how could no one think of giving these kids a future? And then I realized that people don't think they have a future. So I try. Stamp is a model for uh, schools and institutions worldwide that want to properly take care of children with HIV. And it's not just rehabilitating them or treating them. It's not just about medical treatment, it's about education, it's about their psychological well-being. The main reasons I started this program was also because the trafficking issue in these children. Because they are the most vulnerable group now. And there's also this presumption that these are children of sex workers and so on. They are actually not. One of the ch children who was infected, when we found her, she was 11 kilos. She was already 11 years old. She had only bones and today bubbling with life. Uh, really like a miracle. And uh, we have so many miracles, but this was one of those miracles where doctors never thought she would come back to life. And I think that's what we give her. And because, and interestingly, when she came to us, she said, I want to live. So there are so many children who really want to live, but their relatives, families, they feel they are a burden. They honestly feel it's better that these children die early than to see them grow older and suffer. It was revolutionary, the whole project. Small beginnings right now, but I can see the future.